Hey, the choir made me to start from there. So let me start. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors and teachers. Next verse. Quickly, we'll read it down. For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Now, till we all come in the unity of what? Everybody look up. Look at how it's described. The unity of faith is described in the next phrase. In the unity of faith. How is the unity of faith described in the next faith? phrase? It's like, and of so the unity of faith, that is the knowledge. That is the Kai principle. The word and in the Greek is Kai. K-A-I. Everybody, K-A-I. Ka. It means that is, which is. So let's reread it again. Till we are come in the unity of the faith. That is the knowledge of the Son of God. So the unity of faith is the knowledge of Jesus. Every one of us coming to who Jesus is, seeing Jesus for who he is, that is the unity of faith. I'm not talking about the union of people coming together and calling it the union of faith. The unity of the faith. And take note of the word. It is a, a definite article. The unity of the faith. The faith. And the faith is Christ. He said, which is the knowledge of the Son of God under a perfect man, under the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is the reason for discipleship. The purpose of discipleship, like we've been teaching for some weeks now, the word disciples is from the Greek word called matatis. And we have done all of that for a quite a while now, which is an adherent, ad, ad, adherent follower, or, if you please, a learner, or a pulpit learner. And we have explained all of that. And the essence of that is that they should learn. So we all grow together in the unity of the faith. Second Peter and chapter 3, the last verse, I'm sure verse 16 or verse 18. And let's quickly check up something. And this was how Peter signed off his teaching. In Second Peter chapter 3, and the last verse, I'm sure, verse number 18. Look up quickly. We're just flowing. He said what? But grow. What is that? That is. Growth in grace is, that is the knowledge of God. The knowledge of God that you have come to understand, the knowledge of Christ you have come to understand is your growth in grace. Growth in grace is not the number of cars you have. Growth in grace is not the number of shoes you have. Growth in grace is not the number of money you are, the amount of money in your bank account. But the growth in grace is in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So, Paul, uh, Peter, was closing up his letter. And how did he close it up? He said, both grow in grace. We apply the Kai principle again, which is an, which is K-A-I. That is the knowledge of God. If you also observe in your Bible, the word in is in italics, which means it's not in the original manuscript. So it was supplied by the translator to make it root sm smoothly. In any case, it really doesn't hurt. So we can read it, but grow in grace that is in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So how do I measure growth? I measure growth in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So, our preaching, the great commission given to us, whatsoever he had commanded you, and it was the teaching of Jesus Christ, his resurrection, what he did. On Thursday, we established what the gospel is from 1 Corinthians and chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to 4, and where Paul said that the gospel I preached unto you is about the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. He said, moreover, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preach unto you, which also you have received. So the gospel received upon being preached is what we call salvation. And wherein you stand. The truth is, every man stands in the gospel. Outside of the gospel, you can't stand. And that is why I feel for today Christians, because we stand on practices, we are standing on so many things which can really not make us stand. Only the gospel makes us stand. Like we said on Thursday, if a man receives, it, receives a raise in his place of work, that is to say, there is increase in your salary. Is that good news? Come on, talk to me. Is that good news? Because we are trying to at least uh, uh, qualify the word gospel. Because the word gospel means good news. It means if a woman delivers, is it good news? If a man buys a new car, is it a good news? If a man builds a house, is it a good news? So all of them are good news, but we are qualified.
find the good news we are talking about. This good news is about somebody. The good news is about Christ. The next verse explains that. It said, by which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless you believe in vain. Verse number 3 explains what the gospel is. It said, for I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to... So the gospel must explain to us how that Christ died for our sins. Not how I can build a house. How I can build a house must not be the gospel. It must be how Christ died for our sins. Samson, did you hear what I just said? Next verse. And that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the scripture. So we define the gospel to me the death the barrier and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. I will skip to verse 14, 15, 16, and 17 on Thursday. All of these things we are putting it together to help those who are not in church and for those who are following us online so you don't get missing in action. So verse 14, if you please, it says, And if Christ be no reason, then is our preaching vain, and your faith is also vain. So what gives credence to our faith is the resurrection. So the message of the church and what we ought to disciple people with is the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So our preaching is the preaching of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We don't have ten messages. We have one message. That message is Jesus Christ. We are preaching that someone paid for our sins. Someone died as a result of the payment for sin. And then upon resurrection, a church was born. And you and I were a part of that body that was born. And today, our faith must rest in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we gave other examples from the book of Romans and chapter 10, verse 8. To 10, we want you to see it so we don't just assume you know. Someone once said, Assumption is the least form of knowledge. True, true, it's the least form of knowledge. Look up, everybody. But what said it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. So, the word we preach in the next verse says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth, who? So how is a man saved by confessing who? And shall believe in thy heart that God has done what? What if you confess and you didn't believe God has raised him? Nothing happens. It said, thou shalt be saved. So salvation is predicated on the sacrifice. The sacrifice of one who took your place. And then upon that belief, you confess. But if you confess Jesus, like there was a time in this city... All you hear is, I believe, I believe. You don't know what they believe. Sometimes they will tell you, I believe, I believe. Sometimes they will write it on their Bible, I believe in the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Confusion. But the truth of the matter is, the Bible is clear on what saves a man. And the Bible says, we must believe in the resurrection. Somebody say amen to that. Next verse. Hallelujah. I'm excited. I hope you are. I preach myself happy, and I know you are happy too. Oh, verse 10. For... With a heart, man believeth unto what? And with the mouth. So how are you righteous? By believing in the resurrection. So righteousness is not what you walk. Righteousness is upon the belief in the sacrifice. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. Getting blessed this morning. Alright, so we'll get into what we really have for today. But I needed to explain this. That discipleship is about the teaching. And we already established all of this that they had the apostles' doctrine, Acts 2 42. Acts 2 42, I, I don't mind. Acts 2 42, let me revisit all of that because I don't want to assume. Acts 2 42, if you please, quickly. They had the apostles' doctrine and they continued steadfastly. Where? Raphael, you didn't hear me. In where? In the apostles' doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread. That is love feast. And in what? Prayer. So today we will start from where we I shared this morning. Ephesians and chapter 2. Hey, I'm excited. I want to show you something about Ephesians 2. How do you measure the weight of God? Church, how do you measure God's weight? How do you measure God's weight? I measure God's weight in Christ. Christ is the measurement of who, the weight of God. And Christ is the mercy of God. Look at it. And you had he quickened. That is brought, made alive. Who were dead? Where? Okay. Next verse. I'm taking you somewhere. Next verse quickly. 
where in time past you work according to the curse of this world according to the prince of the power of the air the spirit are now working in the children of who among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and we are by nature the children of wrath even as see the word of god everybody read verse 4 look at the word want to go where is god rich come on talk to me where is god rich the giving of christ is the giving of mercy for god who is rich where see when People still don't understand it. They are shouting, God have mercy on me. He had mercy in you when he gave Christ. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us. Next verse. I'm loved. Even when we were dead in sin, had quickened us together with who? He's our mercy. So the word of God is measured in mercy. Oh, God is a killer. Philip, God is not a killer. God is looking for who to destroy. No, God is not a destroyer. God is rich in mercy. We count our weight in our money. We count our weight in possession. God counts his weight in his mercy. How am I communicating? But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love, where we, he loved us, even when we were dead in trespass. But after salvation, we need to grow in grace. And the growth in grace is in the knowledge of the one who saved us. Can I say that again? After salvation, we need to grow in salvation. And how do we grow in this grace? We grow in the knowledge of him. So discipleship is training people in the knowledge of their salvation. Like we said in uh, uh, Colossians. He said, as you have received Christ, walk ye therein. So discipleship is teaching people didachi didachi in the Greek. We need to teach them the apostles' doctrine and the teaching of Christ. So the church should be a center where Christ is taught. Can I say that again? The church is the center where Christ is taught. It is called the ground and the pillar of truth where Christ is dispensed. So our meal is Christ. Our diet is Christ. Our message is Christ. We do not have messages. We have one message. Because only one message got us saved. It therefore means only one message we grow with. We are not called to varieties. Variety, as a matter of fact, is a state of the confusion in man's heart. Can I say that again? Variety is a show of the state of the confusion in a man's heart. So we must understand our meal and our diet is Christ. So the early apostles, they taught. And who were they teaching? They were teaching Christ. And if you read the account of Paul, the Paul would move from house to house. He was teaching Christ. I need to show you something in the book of Acts of the Apostles, if you please. Hallelujah. Mm. Verse chapter 26. In the defense of the gospel, look at what Paul said. Acts 26. Let me just read verse number 14. This is what Paul said. When upon this conversion. From verse 14. Acts 26 from verse 14. He said, And when we were all falling in the earth, I heard a voice speaking unto me, and saying in the Hebrew tongue, Saul, Saul, if you please, why persecutors thou me? It is hard for thee to kick against the priest. Next verse. And I said, Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecuted. So when Paul Saul of Tarsus was persecuting the Christian, you know the encounter he had. But rise up and stand up on thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose, to make thee a minister and a witness, both of these things which thou hast seen, and of those things in which in the which I will appear unto thee. Next verse. He was explaining because in the defense of the gospel, next verse, quickly. Delivering thee from the people and from the Gentile unto whom now I send thee. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. That they may receive what? Among them which are an inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Now next verse. This is the account of Paul. He is explaining what happened to him upon conversion. Whereupon, O Agrippa, I was not disobedient unto the heavenly vision. So Paul stood his ground in the defense of the gospel, telling Agrippa that this 
is my encounter. And that encounter is that we have received forgiveness of sin. So in Christ Jesus, we receive forgiveness of sin. And that is how we are saved. But upon salvation, we don't learn any other thing. We learn Christ. And as Paul went on, Agrippa had this to say. Please quickly, are you the wondering next verse. How to make Let's see what fire. Agrippa said. But show first unto them of Damascus and at Jerusalem and throughout all the coasts of Judea and then to the Gentiles that they should repent and turn to God and do meet and do works meet for repentance quickly. For this cause the Jews caught me in the temple and went about to do what? So what was he teaching? He was teaching Christ. He was teaching the resurrection. He was teaching the experience of Christ. He was not teaching any gospel. Paul would have been a successful man, we know. The reason is, he was so prominent to the extent that he could take letter from the, those on top and to persecute Christians. And yet, no law was taken against him. There was nothing they could do against Paul until he had an encounter and Ananias had to show him the way of the Lord. But upon that, he didn't go teaching his own experience. He taught Christ. So our message is Christ. How do we grow? We grow in Christ. How do we increase in knowledge? We increase in the knowledge of Christ. And that's why I said that when we started, that our growth must be in the knowledge. We are to come to the unity of the faith. So discipleship is bringing people to the unity of the faith, to the knowledge of the Son of God. That is our work here on earth. So every church meeting should be geared towards that. Every meeting in church should be how do we mature people to the knowledge, to the fullness and the stature of the fullness of Christ, so that we can all grow up in Him. The reason is Ephesians chapter two. We didn't finish that place. I like to quickly step there. Ephesians two. Sorry, it's like I'm too fast. I think. Too fast. I think. Some are too fast. Ephesians two. Ephesians chapter two. I was too fast. Are we there now? Let us read from verse 19. But it did not fit me. I'm too slow. From verse 19, Ephesians chapter 2. Come on now. And now therefore you are no more strangers. Stop your neighbor saying you are no more strangers. And foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of who? Now look at this. He said, and are built upon what? Of that is the prophet. Don't forget the Kai principle on the and the Kai principle. What are we built upon? The foundation. Look at the foundation. This is what they have laid for us. We are not. We, they didn't give us entrepreneurship. Did you hear what I just said? They didn't give us business management in church to teach. They didn't give us all the kinds of things we hear today. If you go through the foundation that the apostles have laid down for us, you won't find those things. You won't find coconut, breaking of coconut here. Upon what they have laid down for us, you won't find breaking of covenant and altars. I need to say that again. When you mention altar, the word altar was used mostly in the Old Testament. Depicting the things of the physical where men meet with God in those days. But your heart has become the altar of God. So any man telling you bring this so that we raise up an altar for you. Bring money, bring this. You need to bring up to 30,000. We need to raise a prayer altar. That man is confused. He's not teaching Christ. Because Christ dwells in our heart by faith. Am I communicating? What the apostles handed down to us. This is the foundation. Can you imagine? Nobody can improve on this. This is the foundation. He said, I built upon the foundation of the apostles. That is the prophet. Jesus Christ himself. Being who? The chief cornerstone. So Jesus is the chief cornerstone of the epistles given to us. We are not called to write another Bible. We are not called to do something else. We are called to interpret the Bible correctly. We are called to explain the Bible correctly. That is our mission. Our mission is to explain it correctly so that men can grow up in the knowledge of him. Am I communicating? Look at the next verse quickly. That's our mission. He said, in whom all the building. Are you part of the building? Yeah, you are. All the building fitly framed together, growing up unto an holy temple. In where? In where? In where? 
There is no breaking of pot there. In the Lord, there's no breaking of pot. What we see in church today in Africa is that we are brought shrine to a temple of worship. And all of those things have no bearing with Christ. That's why he said in the Colossians, he said, You have not so learned Christ. Christ is a learning, Christ is a teaching. He's not the practice. The Old Testament emphasizes practices, but Christ fulfilled all of those things. The New Testament emphasizes a person. Can I say that again? The Old Testament emphasizes practices, things. The New Testament, the emphasis of the New Testament is Christ. He is the cornerstone. I say that again. The Old Testament emphasizes practices. Bring this, bring salt, bring oil, bring this, bring coconut, bring cola, bring... They are not different from native doctors. And if any pastor speak against any native doctor, and they are carrying out practices that looks like exactly what they do, they have no moral ground to accuse them. Because if the native doctor asks you for this and the pastor does the same thing, what is the difference? One is simply holding Bible, the other one is holding native talk. The New Testament is by the teaching of Christ. Somebody look at you and say, Pastor is talking to you. Bring stone when you are coming to church tomorrow. That is not the New Testament pattern. The New Testament does not emphasize things. And that's why Paul prayed. He said, the eyes of your understanding be enlightened that you know. The New Testament is about knowing. Tap your neighbor. Say the New Testament is about knowing. Ask your neighbor, what are you supposed to know? Who are you supposed to know? Get an answer from your neighbor to know if he has he or she has been following. Christ, the price he has paid, and what I can do through him now. Squeeze your neighbor's hand and say, Pastor is just talking to you. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 3. Quickly. Oh, I've not finished this. In whom you are also built together for an habitation of God through where? The Spirit. We are built an habitation. What's an habitation? A dwelling place. So you are God's dwelling place. You don't need to go raise any art. You know, I met a pastor. I'm sorry to say. And I got talking with him. And I was all ashamed that in his house, he has a table. And that table, he has flour there. He has different things. I said, what is this? He said, that is my altar. In the New Testament. And I was ashamed. Sister Joy, did you hear what I just said? I was ashamed. Glory be to God forever. So I got to talk with the person in the Bible. Hey, but I know it is my mother in the Lord that gave it to me. So you just know but you believe a person more than the word of God. Can I say that again? You know but you believe your mother in the Lord more than the word of God. Your mother in the Lord brought those items for you to make an altar. And those altars they are things but Christ in you. He didn't want to be in things. He wanted to be in you. For your bodies are the temple of the living God. He does not dwell in things. Can I say that again? He does not dwell in things. Whether coconut oil, olive oil, whatever it is you call it, he does not dwell inside of those things. And that is the insult they have given to the word of God. Where did I quote? Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3. Grace, that is peace. Be multiplied unto you. How? Uh huh. Now take note. You know, I want us as a student. We are student. Now, when we see the hand, let's apply the Kai principle. Are we ready to apply the Kai principle? Can we apply the Kai principle? Let's read. One to go. Grace that is peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God that is of Jesus Christ. So the knowledge of God is Jesus Christ. The only way to know God is to know Him through Jesus. No man cometh to the Father except by me. You know, as we apply the car principle now, I can see everybody is understanding it now. So let's read it again. Let's apply the car principle. One, I didn't say car, so that those people from car what are will not be excited. One to go. Grace that is peace be multiplied unto you through what? That is. Now, so how do we multiply grace? So a seed, so that your grace will multiply. Come on, calm down. Everybody look up. Can you see how God has blessed me? If you want to connect with this grace, if you want to tap from this grace because you are a palm white tapper, bring 100,000. Is grace tapped or grace multiplied through what? 
How do you multiply grace? By sowing a seed into it or by, or by tapping or by knowledge. Everywhere is calm now. That's sound doctrine. Let's look at it again. Look up. Let's read it. One to go. Grace, that is peace, be multiplied unto you. True what? Who is the knowledge of God? So how do I multiply grace? I need to grow more in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That is how to multiply grace. Grace is not multiplied by the bigger your seed, the higher the grace. Don't be deceived. Pastor, the way you are talking, I don't like it. Shouldn't we give to men of God? You are a thief if you don't give. What did I say? I'll validate that. But let's read this next verse. And I'll quickly remind me of that. You should. According as his divine power had given unto us. How many things? That pertain. And what? How again? Through the knowledge of who is a him? Christ. Am I communicating? Galatians 6 says, if you don't give, I need to say, say this pastor is preaching against those giving to the pastor. It's a lie. But we teach the word of God the way it is and teach you your responsibility. Look at your responsibility. Everybody read what to go. In what? Mathematics, physics, chemistry, in business management, come on, in what? Which word? Uh -huh. What should they do? In. So you see, it's so simple. As you are being taught, the Bible says, let him that labor in word and doctrine be accorded double honor. So you, you can minister to them, Philip, you can minister to them. But not connect to the grace that is in my life by bringing money. That is manipulation. Message rendering or NLT. Everybody look up. Everybody is looking at me strangely. This pastor, that is why you are like this. That's why you are not getting plenty of money. Have I complained to you before? I teach you the word of God. Everybody read. Want to go? Is it not true? As I teach you, it is your duty to ask me, Pastor, your children are they in school? Yes. It is your duty. It's your place to say, Pastor, take this for fuel. But it's not my place after preaching like this. How about she? The Spirit of God just told me now. You need to connect with grace. You want to knock somebody's engine. Kaka, 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 kaka. Those for 10,000 come out. You need to connect to this grace. This grace will take you through. You will not die this year. Because no, man, no big man wants to die. Everybody, are you see here? Connect with this grace. Bro, Pabe, the Spirit of God is telling me you can do more than 10,000. Can you say how much you are going to do? That's not my work. See my work. Teach you. Your work. Communicate. I shouldn't use this Bible to manipulate you. Can I say that again? Point at me say, Pastor, your duty is not to manipulate us with the Bible. Then I point to you, your duty is not to punish me by not giving me your resources. Say amen. amen. Give me another rendering. I wish together in church now. Because it's very easy for people to just say, you see this pastor, that's why I like our pastor. He doesn't talk about giving. You are shortchanging yourself. You are shortchanging yourself. Give me another rendering. Quickly, under rendering. Maybe two different rendering. Two different rendering. Everybody read with me one to go. Those who are taught the word of God should provide for their teachers. Sharing all good things. Is a kind of good thing? Might not sleep. Don't share this with your teacher. Raphael, don't share that one with your teacher. All good things. That sleep when you are being taught is not a good thing. If you do 
I touch that one. It's not part of the good things I should take. Praise the name of the Lord. Can you imagine as I'm teaching and I'm sleeping, how would you understand what I'm saying? Say, so learn that is taught in. In words and deeds. Amplified. Everybody, one, two, go. Where, where do we receive the instruction? Okay, what if I came here now? The Spirit of God just told me yesterday night, as I was praying, I prayed 10 hours. Who, are, who asked you to say all those things? You want people to believe you. That's manipulative. A pastor's work, he should pray. He shouldn't come to announce how many hours he has prayed. Can I say that again? It's manipulative. Because at the end of the day, the same people you are talking to, not, not many of them can even pray for one hour. So they look up to you to want to, to be one superstar. So by the time you now say, hmm, the Lord told me, if you don't bring that money, something evil will happen. Is it not manipulation? That's manipulation. So I don't like this pastor. That's why I don't, that's why I don't want to give him. I was told somebody said he left this church. He said, pastor doesn't say, come and sow into my life. Do I need to tell the person or the person should know? Is it it? And those people, they are the stingiest people. What did I call them? Ara died. Aka super, super. How do they call it? Super. They expose their selfishness by such statements. Share all good things with his teacher. Contributing to his support. Church, can I say all of you? Most of you have robbed me in this church. Can I say it again? Everywhere is calm now in this Presbyterian church. I say all of you, except few of you, you have been robbing me. And if I catch every word robber, <laughs> so we have word robbers. Come on, you didn't hear me. What? Yeah. But this is the, the point we are saying. That our meal is what? Christ. So we grow in Christ. We grow in his knowledge. That is the unity of the faith. So discipleship is that act where you are teaching people Christ. We are not teaching any other thing. We are not teaching philosophy. And that's why he warned. He said, least any of us pour you through philosophy of vain glory. Let's check that out in Colossians as we begin to round up. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 and we will end there. Colossians 2 verse 6. We'll stay for a while now. Look up. We are, we are rounding up now. Want to go? As ye therefore receive Christ. Yes. Walk. How, do, how did you receive Christ? The word was preached. How are you supposed to walk? Walk in the same message that has been preached. Next verse. Rooted and built up where? Philosophy. In traditions of men. In bringing coconut to church. Some people believe in coconut more than the word of God. Some people believe in bottled olive oil more than the word of God. They carry it as talisman. A man had a problem. And he had a mental case. Many years ago, please don't look at me to be one superstar. I prayed for some that didn't get healed. For, for his case, he brought him, tore his clothes, I prayed for him. He regained his sanity. He became sane. And then the wife was busy calling. The driver wouldn't pick. He called a security escort. The security escort said, we're in pastor's house. I said, what happened? He called, she called me. I said, bring clothes because the man had torn all everything he wore. And then I said, bring his clothes so that he can change. He had slept off because I prayed for him. He just slept. I didn't pray for long. I said, Lord, you give it to your beloved. Sleep, you fast spirit out. Okay. It was not a VG. So the woman called me. He said, their pastor blessed water for them. Pastor, as I'm coming this night, is war. I said, which war? If you want to do war, not in my house. He said, I'm bringing the water. Are you seeing people believe in water more than the word of God? And here is a pastor who told you that. He just said a word and the man is healed. But you say you are bringing water. You see, people have confidence in what a man has blessed more than what the word of God has done. The word of God is blessed forever. Any other item is not blessed forever. You better be trained in the word of God. Squeeze your neighbors and say be trained. In the word of God. In the knowledge of Christ. 
All right. Look, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been. So it means that the, the, the stability of a believer is dependent on the teaching he has received. Can I say that again? As he has been taught, is teaching. Discipleship is teaching. Don't let anybody deceive you. Is teaching. I'm happy every, almost everybody come in here with Byron and paper. Please, as you write, go home, do revision. Look at it. Abounding therein with worth. Next verse. And we're going to use other rendering now. Everybody read one to go. Uh huh. Let's read in unison. One to go. I'm not hearing your voice. What is philosophy? Feel good. Feel good message. And vain word. After the tradition. So there is a tradition of men. There is philosophy. There is vain deceit. All these things exist in pulpits. Can I say that again? All these things exist where? They exist in pulpit. There exist philosophy. There exist vain deceit. And after the tradition of men, we have it in the pulpit. And then the rudiment of the world. How the world operates. Can't you see? If you give this now, you will receive this. We give not because we want to receive. We give because we are blessed. Only a blessed man can give. Stop playing Kalo Kalo with God. Bring that 10,000. If by next week it doesn't turn to 100,000, I'll drop my Bible. Will you carry your Bible even when you are sleeping? No, you will drop your Bible. Is it not true? After that, they will drop the Bible. I'm, have I not dropped this one? Huh? <laughs> Praise God. Everybody say teaching, teaching, teaching. And that is why you see we do a lot of teaching in church. If you want me to be like those philosophers, I can do it. And I'm here to tell you something. The power of God will visit you. God does not visit his children. He lives in them. Can I say that again? God does not visit his people. He lives in me. I carry him everywhere. He said, the Lord will, Pastor Barry, the Lord will visit you this week. You are not in the Old Testament because he has not had a permanent abode. For in him we move. In him we live. In him we have our pain. So he doesn't... Now, the God that you are calling to visit you, he lives in you. Will that kind of God come? It's already in you. Praise God. Let's finish this. He said, after the rudiment of the word, and not after... So it means that our teaching should be who? It shouldn't be the rudiment of the world. Is that okay? It shouldn't be the traditions of men. Is it okay? It shouldn't be after vain deceit. Is it okay? It shouldn't be true philosophy. And look at how the Bible could spoil you. And that is what has spoiled the church. Everywhere is calm in this Presbyterian church. Today is Sunday. So many people have been spoiled and damaged. When they are vain teaching, when they are true, they will bring them here. We will do, we will do repair work. <laughs> damage control and damage resetting. Yes. That's just the truth. We were there before. Next. Or give me another two rendering of this. Oh, I love this. For in him, because it is in him, dwelleth all the fullness of the God. How? So, bodily, the fullness of the God dwells in him. So, to know God is to know him. Everybody say in him. Dwell it. The fullness the, of, the, of the Godhead. Bodily. Now, give me NLT or, or a message. Give me a message, verse 8, verse 9, and we'll close. My time is up. Bless today. Everybody read with me one to go. What do they do? With what? Uh-huh. Uh, wait. Come on.
for you to future in your future. You need to future for your future to future in your future. Say, I hear. For you to do this, you need to do that, you need to do this. Say, am I communicating? Say, am I communicating? Say, communicate. I've, I've, I've been to a church. Am I? Somebody just, am I communicating? The church say, come me. No, they say, come me. <laughs> say, am I communicating? Come. Now look at what the Bible says. Watch out for people. Who try to dazzle you? With what? There is social communal grievance of this place is sister woven, and at the same time is appalling. You see, when we're talking about Christianity, Ignatius and Apollos and Polycarp in the 15th century, when they, were you there? How does that one talk? How does that one lead me to Christ? Are you hearing what I'm saying? How many of you know what is about to happen? Valentine, isn't it? Now, if you are not careful, you will bring it from the philosophy aspect with big words, isn't it? Constantine and St. Valentine, that is not the teaching. If we are talking about love, we should explain the unconditional love of our father. Is that true? How do they do it? They dazzle you with what? Let, 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 let me look for one to speak. You people shout, Professor. There should be no Hitler, like the plague, the anarchy, chaos, and injustice, the social communal grievance, and everything should be in a paripasolistic way in the bodacity of paragonism. Say, Rado, sir! Say, Papa, took me! <laughs> There's one I've seen. As, as the pastor was teaching, some people stood up. See Bible. See Bible. As they have seen the Bible, you see, that time they are excited. The, the, the message, they have missed it. Are we seeing it together? So, come on. I'm, so, I'm sorry. Can we read it? I'm, I'm, I shouldn't talk again. Let, I should. Prof. Say, prof! The mother cannot write. You know, people can speak English and cannot make sentence in written. I know them. Can't write good sentence, but they can speak it. Say, spell it. Dazu. Hey, da, 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 di, da, da. <laughs> Instead of you to teach Christ, you are beginning intellectualism. Look at it. Watch out for people who try to. Would there be such people? Who should watch out? You. To so dazzle you with big words and intellectual double talk. They want to drag you off into endless arguments that never amount to E.G. Jehovah's Witness. One met me on the road. Hey, can't you see the kingdom of God? Look at everywhere. It's fine. Our road is being tired. It's fine. I was looking at him. I said, which kingdom? The kingdom has come. That kingdom you are looking for came. Christ brought it. She got confused. And said, um, uh, can't you see the Bible says that there is corruption in the, in the world. I said, you are quoting First John chapter 4, verse 14. I said, let me help you. The Bible said, we have escaped from the corruption. Then they said, uh, Daniel chapter 2. I said, excuse me. All of those things are eschatology. Christ fulfilled everything. When are you always around? I said, I'll be around tomorrow. I don't deal with recruits. I'm looking for your leader to talk to. That confusion you people are giving to others. Let me correct you and cure your mind. Hello. The Bible says avoid them. Is it, is it me that said it? Avoid them. Alright. Read with me. They spread through what? Is it the way of Christ? We now know them. Once you see them, just say not them. See them, they don't come. You know the meaning, for those of you watching by way of uh, internet, the word not them, in, our, uh, in the vernacular here, we call it PG, it means they are the set of people. It's a sect of people. They are a sect, like the Pharisees. Praise the name of the Lord. 
Look at it. Everything of God gets expressed. Where? How many things of God? So you can see and hear him clearly. You don't need a telescope, a microscope, or a horoscope to realize the fullness of Christ and the emptiness of the universe without him. I've closed the church. God bless you.